Muting. Okay. Hello, everything. It's live. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Whip Finish Wednesday. Wait, hang on. It's still spinning. And we've got another fun night planned. <clears throat> Hopefully, everyone can hear us. Hopefully, everyone can see us. And we're going to be up and rolling in no time. So uh, last week, we tied the Quill Gordon and uh, the Quill Gordon Parachute and had quite a few uh, people tie up those flies. And while we're getting started, Katie, can you see any comments coming through? I can. Oh, Katie can see some comments coming through. So that means you guys are with us. So awesome. <clears throat> um, I just want to say thanks so much to everyone for um, for posting your, uh, your flies, for commenting on the video. That makes us feel very special. But most importantly, it's really cool to see the work you guys put in see how you all do the different variations. And uh, now I can see the comments. So Jimmy, it's the first one I've seen. So thank you, Jimmy. Howdy. Um, so we've got a busy night tonight. We're uh, going to go over. Uh, almost, Katie has been trying a, uh, a new. Yes. Can you hear us? Thank you. And uh, what's up, Howie and Christine? Katie's got a new piece of software running in the background so we can play some video. Great. I'm glad you can hear us. So we're taking an already confusing process and make it even more confusing. Hey, Ed and Patrick, I'm glad that you can hear us. Um, we're making it even more confusing. So um, here in just a few minutes, we're going to play a video from fishing in the park this weekend. Um, wild water. It. Uh, I went out on Saturday and uh, I knew it was going to rain. I was prepared for it to rain. And uh, it wasn't raining when I got on the water. About five or ten minutes later, it started raining. I took a little video of it raining. Um, caught one fish, and then the skies opened up to where when I pulled my phone out to video, it really I couldn't <clears throat> couldn't even push uh, push record. It was not not much fun. So, um, but I didn't manage to catch a couple of fish. The next day I went out. It was much prettier. My uh, good friend, um, Jesse Huddleston, he's on here as Appalachian Fly Guide. Uh, we're on Instagram, Appalachian Fly Guide. He came out and joined me um, uh, on Sunday, and we had a fun little day catching fish. Had caught a, caught a bunch of fish. Didn't catch anything big, but um, lots of um, quill gordons, lots of uh, blue quills, and uh, even some March browns, believe it or not. Um Oh, Steve, that's cool. Glad you caught a few. And Mark, what's up to you? Um, so here, here's one of the, the fish that, that uh, we caught. I can't remember that was a, the, which day that was. But you can see that parachute we tied last week. That was the winner for the, uh, for the show or for the, the, the day. Um, it definitely definitely did well. So um, the fish we, we where the flies are tied up here are not only kind of cool looking, but they they work so yeehaw so katie you ready to play that video it's playing oh the video is playing great um so here we are here i am pulling this little fish in um <clears throat> and uh yeah i'm still not very good at my videoing and catching the bite on the uh on the um what's up gary so there there he is I'm sure I was saying something very smart. Like, I think one of them, I was like, oh, great March Brown. And then I was like, oh, shoot. Darn Quill Gordon. So, um, yep, fun day. It, it, it was awesome seeing all the fish just hopping on or just rising everywhere with the, the, the dry fly action going. What's up, Freddie and Gary? I don't know if you can hear us while the video is playing, but if you can, let me know. Went down to a new place in Saudi Daisy. Oh, cool, Tyler. I don't know. Tyler, Gary, can you guys hear me while the video is playing? Don't know. Okay, good. Cool. Um, so, that, like I said, the video of uh, or my videography skills on the water are not very good. So I apologize. What's up, Keisha and Bill? Um, so anywho, <clears throat> so we appreciate, uh, Jesse coming out and saying, Hey, 
Um, but we also uh, wanted to share some pictures of the um, of the flies, right, Katie? Sure. All right. So here are some of the flies that, that were posted last week. Yes, I was using a GoPro mark. Featherweight um, fly company. Oh, that, that, that one looks really cool how I did that tilt wing version of it. That one's super neat. Um, Stonefly one. Oh, Chris. Matt's flies. I just thought you guys trio. would think it would be cool to see fish actually biting the flies. <laughs> Gray ghost. What's up, Randy? That's Ed. Surfer dad. AK Sledneck. Oh, Randy. Tying up a nice little duo. Good day again. Good day again. Good day, Ken. Graham Jones. Now, th this is one I said in the comments. I wish I, I, I had that one on because having that little merger style would have been great to uh, to switch up uh, to kind of give a little bit of variation. Flygal 303. Oh, nice trio with a cool Colorado background. Jay Wilson. The split tails. Looking good, J Jim. Jimmy Roop. Oh, Patrick, you forgot to post. Next time. Christine Gonzalez. I think that might it's be like a Picari that Picari Picari. she might have killed. I'm not sure. Electric tire. Old John Collins. Big T. Big T. He's the one that reminded me to do that synthetic wheel last week. D. Bishop. Old Don. Those Semper Fly guys were really happy to see that. Spool of thread there. And here's another one from Featherweight. I, I added that one because I like the upside down shot there. Ooh, kind of like Stranger Things. You like the upside down? Yep. Run the wet fish under a cool burn dry. Steve, I caught all mine on the dry, but I had a wet um, right behind it. I didn't catch one on the on the the, the uh, dry. And who's that, Katie? I don't know. Who is that? <laughs> That's Mama Angler. She's on here right now, and uh, she's not fishing. She's at a, at a rodeo. So, all right. Um, so, one more thing before we get to tying. I got a package today from Amazon. Always love doing that. Um, Katie and I are going to be really, we're going to have a phenomenal time in June. We've got a trip to Colorado. It's a work trip for me. But uh, while we're there, we're going to drive over to um, uh, Idaho and then over to Wyoming and then hang out in West Yellowstone with none other than Craig Matthews. So we um, went ahead and talking with Craig and bought a couple of his books that he suggested to, to get before we come out there to fish. And um, these are really really cool book so far. Like I said, here's, here's the packaging and um, also got on blue quill anglers or uh, blue ribbon flies uh, site and ordered some um, official Zelon and Zelon dubbing. Uh, so I can tie the X caddis just the way he, just the way Craig likes it. And I, I did when I opened it up just a little while ago, I thought this was kind of funny because um, he's got each little stream, each little river, um, marked out and and some nice maps. And Katie, we flip over to the, the vice itself because there's one, the legend is kind of funny because you've got like access by hiking, by vehicle, brook trout, brown trout, really, really good legend here. But the, the part that I really like is the don't bother. I wish people had that on maps around here. Like don't bother fishing there. Just go, go to where it says access by hiking. Don't bother. That's kind of funny. <laughs> But um, this is the, <clears throat> well, I can't get it down. Let's switch over to the, the pine desk. So this is the Yellowstone Fly Fishing Guide. This is uh, Craig Matthews' uh, book. It's really good stuff if you're ever going out there. And this is one he said, don't be fooled by the name. It is not 100% uh, Tinkara. Let me knock over all my stuff here. Uh, simple fly fishing techniques for Tinkara and rod and reel. Um, so does he have a big, big foot? Patrick, I guarantee some people are going to the Lancaster show that are on here. Um, unfortunately we are not, we're, uh, we've got some other stuff.
plan with the kiddos. Um, <clears throat> but both of these look like they're going to be good books. We will be tying out Time Flies out of this one later on. Um, and uh, if you do decide to order some, just order them off Amazon or from your fly shop. The proceeds for these do go to conservation. And uh, can we switch back over to the main uh, thing? Thank you. Um, the proceeds do go to conservation for these 100% of the proceeds do. Last year, Craig's book, uh, the proceeds went to Yellowstone Forever, Yellowstone Forever Native Fish Program and Montana Trout Unlimited. So that's pretty cool. Um, and let's see the comments. Speaking of angles, I'll be there. Okay, so so Howie will be in Lancaster. Um, it's like a fun trip. I mean, native and we well, in Colorado. Well, Nikki, we're planning on fishing in Idaho, Colorado, and Wyoming. So should be a fun time. Um, all right, Katie. So uh, we're still doing the giveaway. We're up to, I think, 533. So we're a third of the way there to uh, to um, the giveaway. So do you want to show some of the stuff that we'll be giving away and, and how to enter when we hit 600 sure. subscribers? You can win a $25 gift certificate from Gary Barnes simply by using hashtag Whitcoonish Wednesday and commenting on the YouTube video when we hit 600. Um, so we'll be giving away this $25 gift certificate from Gary Barnes and a, um, a fly box from Umqua. It's going to have some flies in it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got some flies in it and um, some uh, Angler's Coffee stickers. Well, they're going to get two bags of Angler's Coffee and a cup. And this beautiful Hungarian partridge skin from Smitty's Fly Box. So big thanks to Smitty's Fly Box for that skin. Um, so we haven't decided yet if we're going to break it up into... Um, um, <clears throat> please do, yep. Um, we're, we're not sure if we're going to break it up so multiple winners. Probably have multiple people win. Um, just to keep it kind of fun. But uh, And Misha's here. She says hello to everyone. Um, and yeah, Patrick, get hooked up with with uh, with Howie. He'll be man in the booth for Angler's Coffee, and big thanks to them for uh, for uh, putting up some stuff for us to give away. So let's tie some flies. What do you say, Misha? Is that okay? You want to tie something? Cool. Uh, so when we're fishing this weekend, like I said, there were lots of uh, a lot of mayfly activity, a lot of blue quills, a lot of quill gordons, even some March browns. But mixed in with that was um, with some caddises. There were some little, small, grayish, not black, but grayish caddises, a dun caddis, uh, but they were very small. Um, so that's why we tied some size 18s, uh, because that would have been nice um, when, as I, as I told Steve a little while ago, uh, I was fishing the parachute with a soft tackle. All my bites came on the, the parachute, and believe it or not, after I think about six fish on the second day or seven fish on the second day, I cut the dropper off and then I quit catching fish on the, uh, the, I only caught one or two more the rest of the day. But you know, as you're switching different flies, different, co different colors, different, just slight variations, see if one's going to work better than the other. It would have been nice to have uh, some small caddis uh, handy and ready to go. And I just pulled this out of the vise. So, Here's where we're going to tie first um, in the vise here. Let's switch over. I wanted to show the... Oh, yes. Oh, who did that Who did that picture, honey? That's a gorgeous picture. I don't know. Somebody's got a lot of time on their hands. Oh, honey. No way. So this is where we're going to start, start off tying. It's just a quick, simple uh, elk hair caddis. And then we're going to move over... Misha? Uh oh, Misha's getting in trouble. Then we're going to move over to um, Craig Matthews X Caddis. This is the improved X because it has the um, little bit of flash in it, but it has the um, underwing as well, as you can see there. So it's got a good profile, um, and um, the, these these are not difficult to tie. But really, when you're tying, some, Katie Nan says someone has a lot of talent on their hands, not time. Thank you, Nan. You're you're very kind. We always appreciate you. 
Um, so X Caddis is a great, super easy to tie. They're a little bit lower riding, float great. Um, this is uh, definitely a, a a winner in our book. But the darn L Care is just um, just a staple. But you know, tying size 14s not a big deal. Uh, we're going to be tying the Freshwater 503, which is the dry fly lights, A Rex hook in a size 18. Um, but once you start tying them small. Uh, it gets a little bit more tricky and that's one of my tips for people when they're trying to learn to tie uh, and trying to get really good at certain patterns is it sounds kind of odd but try tying it smaller than you need and what I mean by that is like if you're just trying to tie a, you know a size 18 heck keep it simple size 18 zebra midge uh, try tying a size 24 or size 22 because if you can get a size 22 and get that down pretty pat, pretty pat, get that down pretty well, then uh, when you switch it back over to the 18, it's no problem at all. It's like super easy. That's where I look at it, and it's straight on my, straight the way I'm looking at it, it's crooked on the camera. No cap, I see what I thank you. Um, and Howie agrees with the X Caddis for the win. So the thread I'm going to use tonight, all night long. Last week, someone was talking about nano silk, and they're wondering if you could use that. And I can't remember what the conversation went, but um, we're going to use black nano silk and 12 odd. This is the Semperfly nano silk. I'm going to also use the nano silk wax. Um, this is a very hard wax, um, and all I do is I pull out some thread, um, put my finger right here. Thank you, Katie. You're awesome. Put my finger here and just to hold the thread in between the the a finger and the wax and just pull it through put it back down roll it up and now we're ready to rock and roll and all that wax does is give uh the nano silk a little bit more purchase a little more grip on the um the hook shank and um <clears throat> makes it a little easier to to tie in not necessary at all if you don't have the wax um so we've got the the thread all the way back to the bend and now i'm just going with the open spiral wraps i'm just giving that hook shank a little bit of texture i'm going to um run it back up to the front so the one we posted today had a, a gray body and uh black wire but just so you can see it a little bit i'm gonna do a black body and silver wire and this is the 010 or the 0.1 shoot Right set up 0.1 millimeter bright silver tying wire and you know if i was thinking this earlier if you wanted to you could especially with this nano silk you could just use your tag just make sure you twist it up to uh um cord it up so it wasn't very wide so patrick did a lot of these filling mill jig hooks in 22 to 24 did they make those size 18 it's like yeah i mean that's what i'm saying once you if you can get a 22-24, then uh, it's just all what you're used to, and it um, makes it a lot. Makes those 18s they do seem giant. And like this, like once I get, once I tie a bunch of these um, size 18 elk hair caddis in the spring, when I'm uh, um, tying size 16s and 14s, they they're just giant comparatively. So I'm going to do black. We're going to use just some K some K-pop, some K-pop dry fly dummy in black because I did one in gray, and I thought black would be kind of cool because the wing's going to be tan, so it kind of you know even it all out. So I've got my you see how the fibers when I pulled it out they're kind of aligned. Through my left hand, I'm going to take with my right hand and pull out that you see those are definitely aligned pull my thread out pinch it and now this does not need to be a super thin i mean this is an 18 so it doesn't need to be kind of thin but this does not need to be like just dirty up your thread this is definitely going to be a for an 18 a chunkier body um because it's a caddis where we it, it's does not need to be like a super thin anything and there we go it should be fine we'll slide it up just a little bit and i've got the thread right by the eye we'll bring it back 
So the dubbing starts right here, right by the hook bend. We'll put a couple wraps. And I'm just gonna stack them up side by side, just like this. A nice little, somewhat even. There we go. And that looks fine. <clears throat> Actually got the right amount. Are you talking the improved ace caddis? I will be, Gary, but right now I'm just doing a regular old elk hair caddis. Nothing fancy, just in a size, just in a size 18. Most of the time we see people tying them live or tying them on YouTube. We're tying them really, really like size 14s. And this is, um, here's our, our stacker, our miniature stacker. So you can see this is a pretty, pretty small hook. Um, I've got the feather that I used earlier and just left over. And this, when we measure it out, you can see it comes down to the just a shade below the hook point. So all I'm going to do is take my, the feather tip where the where it's cut off, just pull off a little bit of the, the hackle right here. That's way too much. So I'll cut that off. And now I want to put the wax on. This is kind of one of the... This is not a trick at all. I don't know who I'm, who I'm fooling. I want to wax my thread because I want to give it a little bit of grip. Um, so, yeah, that's super cool if uh, some of y'all can get together at uh, the Lancaster Show. Um, so you can see right behind my hook eye, see how this bare hook? I've got wax on my thread now, so I'm just going to do a, just a slight layer right here just to give that hook shank a little bit of grip because it does have the wax on there. I'm going to stop saying the word wax because I feel like I've said it a bunch. So I'm going to take my stem, butt it right up on to my thread and do one wrap. You can see how the stem, I think you see it going down. I'm going to come up and then cross my thread over the stem again. So I've got two wraps holding that, um, see the thread right there? You should just bump into the camera. Good grief, dog. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to bring it back up, a couple wraps, pull really tight, and now we're, now we're fine. That's good and locked in. It's not going anywhere. All we're going to do is, is do one, I'm going to watch where my, my hackle starts coming out. You see it started coming out the bottom. So I'm going to do one complete wrap here. And you know what? If I did two wraps there, that'd be fine. Uh, and then I'm just going to do open spiral wraps back. Don't overthink this. Just keep them, e keep them even. The more you think about this, the the worse it'll be. Just open wraps. Now I'm gonna grab my wire that I tied in on the opposite side of the hook shank. Bring this down around that hook point, and I'm gonna come back up. Cross over that um, <clears throat> hackle stem, and my tip on wrapping the wire through this is pretend like there's no wire there or pretend like there's no hackle feathers fibers sticking anywhere so I got a couple two wraps with this uh, thread pull tight and I'm just gonna pull back pull everything back just a little bit I like doing that because it binds that down I've got the wire doubled over itself I can cut off my hackle stem. <clears throat> so now we've got a little, very sparse, we've got a little uh, body done. So if we just fish this, got that one little guy right there, it's going to aggravate me. If we just fish this alone, guess what? It's going to float. So with that said, we don't need a huge, huge, huge CDC wing or um, elk hair, deer hair wing. Um, you can definitely use one if you want, but you don't need one. Um, so, um, but we're, we are putting one on my, what I mean when I say that is you don't have to put a whole bunch of hair on there. So for this first one, we're going to use the medium done, uh, compared on hair because this being a smaller fly, uh, we need a small, small wing. This is short. This is actually super long, but they're fine fibers. The tips, the black tips are really small. Um, <clears throat> The, the black tips are really small, they're really short. Um, 
and we get the hollowness, the thicker part, it starts a lot closer to the tip than, uh, than some. <clears throat> so, we're just going to cut off, and if you all want to see a little video on good ways to stack and prepare deer hair, we've got a video on here. Just go and watch that, because that's all I'm doing, is stacking and preparing. So we'll get our stacker sticker in here. I think Mark bought this stacker. I know he bought the Magnum one. <clears throat> stacker the other day so I'm going to tie these wings in two different ways uh, the, this first way we'll go to the, the hook shank um, you see all the tips are lined up I'm gonna grab it out pull it make sure we're nice and nice and even so th the first way I want to do this is how I did this for I've tied in um, elk hair and deer hair um, wings for a really long time <clears throat> it definitely works it's, I think it's, it's definitely easier to get your measurement correct. And all you do is you, you take your, your, your hair, line it up right where you want it. And I want the tips to go right to the back of the hook shank. So it's, it's ha hanging over the body just a little bit. I grab that in a pinch and I take my thread. Now you don't want to pull super tight on the, on the deer hair because it will you will break through it. So we just pull just enough to flare. I'm gonna grab about a third of it, come down, flare it, another third, flare, grab the rest of it. And I haven't done this way in so long, I hope I don't mess up cutting it. Um, <clears throat> now we'll take our whip finisher, pull all this back, A nice whip finish in there. You can see my eye is nice and clear. Pull this off. So you can see all the, the eyes right there. I might have a piece of a hackle, piece of hackle in there, but it's cleaned out. We're good. All you have to do now is pull the butt ends forward. And this is where, since I haven't done it, I might mess up, but there we go. Typically I um I like for the, the angle of the cut to be roughly the angle of the the down eye of the the hook, but um that's so that's one way to do it. And that's just your quick elk hair caddis, but small. So you see holding the hair that way, getting to where the, the tips line up with the um, the back of the, the hook bend. You can look at your silhouette, make sure that's what you want. Nice little dunish, blackish elk hair caddis all done and when we finish it i take the um sally hansons just put a drop right there let it sink in grab a piece of scrap wire stick it through the eye and now we're good to go so that one's easy easy peasy right katie mm -hmm. She's like, mm -hmm. I think doing it in one third is better than tying it off all in one spot. So that and and Steve, there's nothing. I think that's a fine way to do it. I just found look watching some of the some other tires. The way I'm going to do this um, this X cat is it just it's just different, and it's all in what you like. Um, I'm waxing my thread again. It's all in what you like. It's all in what you're comfortable with. Like I said, I tied my deer and elk, elk heads or wings in like that for a really, really, really long time. Um, no, nothing wrong with it. And if, if I thought there was something wrong with it, I wouldn't have shown it just now. Um, so we got our thread started. Still have just a touch of bare hook shank right there, right behind the eye. And that's kind of my point. I do not want to go forward to that until I'm ready to start working so we'll do the same thing i'm going to bring my thread to the back bring it all the way up open spiral and this is where we this is why we ordered um some uh zelon from oh man i cannot talk today from blue ribbon flies because next time we tie these we'll be using zelon 
But um, I know for a fact that Severfly Poly Yarn works just fine. The key thing is you want a floaty material, um, one that's going to capture light. It's going to be sparkly, add a little bit of bling to it. Um, but all I'm going to do is take my <clears throat> poly yarn or Zelon or, you know, whatever kind of floating yarn you've got, pull it to length. And we've got it tied in. Bring this back up to the front. And for length, just to keep, this is a trick for keep to keeping all your flies the same. Um, I like to bring it forward. Put my, um, I probably I'll do one more wrap back because I'm, I'm a little bit shy before I cut this. So bring it just like that. So I'm going to take the, my scissors, put them right on the hook eye, oh, like that, and cut it off. So now I've got, once the fly's done, my shuck will be the same length as the body. And if you wanted to rough it up a little bit, that way it's not such a hard, hard cut, you can. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So Craig uses Crystal Flash. This is uh, UV Crystal Gray. Um, so I want to wrap it on the other side of the fly, just like it was my ribbing. Got that wrapped in. And um, he also uses a shaggy dubbing. That's the Zelon dubbing, but I wanted to use one that, because I don't have the Zelon dubbing, I'm going to use some Nature Spirit muskrat dubbing because it's a good dry fly dubbing as well. It's a little shaggier and, um, and it's got Katie's wonderful handwriting on it. See there. No, that's Shelby. Oh, that's Shelby's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got the little. Uh, Misha, get out of there. <laughs> Misha just scared herself. So we're going to wrap on this, this dubbing. And the um, this is a really cool pattern. You can throw a soft tack on the front to give it some more like legginess. Um, you can do lots of things to make this fancy, but really, you don't have to. Um, Watching Craig tie it, he's like, dude, don't fix it. Don't don't make it look. Don't try to manicure it or anything. Just it'll, it'll fish fine. Down, down. So we'll set this here for now. So the that elk hair cast I just tied and this fly, and we'll probably throw a couple of the other ones that we've tied this week. These will all be added to the box for the giveaway for that box. So now we're going to bring this up. Remember, you don't want it like super duper duper thin. Uh, it's probably about right. Pull that off. There we go. Something I put way too much on. Big shocker. Oh, okay, there we go. So I've got my little bit of um, extra right there that's kind of going back, and I'm going to leave that on there. <clears throat> Take my uh, crystal flash, wrap it around some nice even segmentation, e even segments, something like that. I'm going to tie this off just like I did the wire. Put a couple wraps and fold that back. Put a couple more, two or three wraps in. And now we got that nice and locked in. So we got a nice little body there. It's up for an 18. It's kind of chunky. Um, got a good little shuck here. And what's cool is his book has the different um, stages throughout the, the year. And you can see what month you're going to. And I'll be able to tie up the correct color for, um, for that time of year. So that'd be... I can tell Katie's just so ecstatic. Totally. <laughs> All right, so I've got another piece of this, um, the um, poly yarn. And uh, so for the underwing, if you wanted to add some crystal flash on the underwing, you could. Um, I'm going to try to cord up my, um, my thread. Bring it back to the back here. 
pinch wrap and pull it to length. That's what I was afraid of. I'll do it like this instead. Put three wraps in, pull it nice and snug. Now cut that out. And now we'll lash everything down. Make sure it stays nice and clean. For the the wing, the 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 hair is going to be roughly the same length as as we did the uh, the elk hair caddis. So I want this to be just a little bit shorter. So we'll say about like that. So you see, we got our wing. See how the um, that's going to add the floatability. I always like to say floatability. It's going to add to the floatability, and uh, it's going to give give it a nice little shimmer from the underside and um, it's gonna look nice with the um, with the deer hair. So for this one, I'm gonna use X Caddis deer hair. Boom. Because this was for the patches that I had, probably the best one for the size 18. And really the reason why, and this is all, that's all I'm getting right here. Pretty small little, little pinch. Um, the reason why I'm doing the X caddis um, is it's it's going to flare it really close to the tip, which is what, what we want. A lot of times the, the larger um, hairs, the larger patches of deer hair, the, the black tips will be longer. That This part's not hollow, the part at the very, very end. Um, not that it's not going to assist or desist and in, uh, in floating, but um, it's not the... All hair is not quite created equal. So we'll stack that real quick. Jeff, you've missed it all. You missed vi video and everything. All right, so we've got our tips here. Pull it down. So here, here's the difference. Um, and this does take a little bit more, a little bit more practice. So you've got to hold the you got to do your measurement, okay, and look at right where you want that to be um, cut. Transfer your fingers over, and transfer your finger. Transfer your fingers. Transfer your um, uh, deer hair over to your other hand, and remember where the measurement is. I'm just gonna cut. Um, I'm just gonna cut it like so. As you're cutting, a lot of times if I pull, it doesn't make sense, but if I pull my scissors away as I'm cutting. That will um, get a cleaner cut, but we just want to do a quick little, quick little cut, and have that be a straight, um, <clears throat> straight, nice, even line. So I want to line up the butt, the the cut ends with the ho hook eye, if not just a shade behind the hook eye. I'm gonna come up, capture this with one, two wraps, okay, and now with the, with one tug. I flared out. Now the reason that's nice is because now all the the hairs are going out. They're all the same length. A nice little ball right there. And um, just like before, and we can check real quick and make sure my length is good. And honestly, it might be just a shade on the long side, but I think that's fine. Um, like a shade, like maybe. No, I think that's right. Um, so the way we tied in the first time, you know how we ran the thread through the butt ends that kind of locked it in. Well, if you'll just pretend like you're not going to mess anything up, take your thread and put it through the butt ends like this. Hey, it's messed up. I pull tight and oh, we're good again. And I'm just going to take my thread and bring it right around like this. Put a couple locking wraps in. And now all I need to do is whip finish it. And uh, and we're done. So we have a nice little size. Now, remember, this probably looks pretty big on your TV or whatever, but um, <clears throat> that's... Um, that's a size 18. That's a and it's a genuine size 18 hook. The uh, the the dry fly light is a it's a, it's a smaller hook. So now we're going to whip finish, and let's do it like this. Pull it around. Just want to sneak your thread right underneath the um, 
those cut ends. Pull it tight. And you're good. So now we can check and make sure that hook eye is completely clear. And ooh, it looks nice. Um, check our, our silhouette underneath. Make sure that it's looking that it's looking good. See if there's anything you don't like about it to change on the next one. But that's I mean that's that's pretty much what I'm what I'm going for. Um, I think it will look totally different when I use different materials. But um, we've got a nice little sparkle in there from the underside. A little spot on the lens got me again. I thought I had a funny screen on my computer. <laughs> Mark, thanks for pointing that out. Um, you should have seen all the stuff. We actually had we went live a few times before we did this to see if we could do the um, um, the video because that's was quite a pain. But anyway, so this is this one's done. We'll put a little bit of I mean this little bottle here. I've had how long have you guys been seeing me? I didn't think that it would keep. The, the Sally Hansen's as good as it has. I think it's like four bucks or five bucks for the bottle. Um, but I've probably gone through three bottles of Sally Hansen as far as getting it thicker, thinning it out, thicker, thinning it out, like going through them. Um, and I filled this up about, what, about a year ago or so, honey? Yeah. Maybe a year, year and a half ago. I don't know. And the, the it's still just like it came out of the bottom, this bottle. It, the way that wire works um, it keeps it super fresh. Sometimes I like the brush applicator. Sometimes this is good too. But put a little drop right there on the head, let it soak in, and uh, and we're good to go on that. Um, I always like suggesting people get stuff that's inexpensive. Pretty pretty nice. So, with that said, what do you want to do, Katie? You want to tie something else on the because we're not going to be you might have time to tie one more okay one more, guy. one more little guy sure well are, do you guys have any questions while we're chatting along yes i know that there's a little spot on the lens i apologize i haven't got around to getting that yet well let's open up this uh this box from smitty's fly box it is, I, I don't know what it is, or I, I, all I know is what's on this. It says, this is our intermediate time box from November 2022, duck butt. So we'll open this up. I think I have to add that one to the caddis box. The, the, uh, the X caddis, John. John, you've been cranking out some really good looking flies recently, by the way. All right, so with these, the Smitty's Fly Box, you get your thread, dubbing, so thread, dubbing, beads, hooks, and CDC in this one. And we've got our little newsletter, but it's not a newsletter. It's a step-by-step -step of what we're going to do. So this will be how easy it will be. We'll set this right here. We've had a name, the duck butt, for quite some time. We went to the drawing board and had a few more few more than a, more than a few times this creation. This little Euro pattern is what came out of hours of testing and tying. The duck butt is a great soft tackle style fly that can sound quick and has been a great addition to our boxes. It's not overly complicated to tie either. That's good for me. Uh, the most important thing is you watch your proportions on your dubbing. It's very easy to overdub this fly and get carried away with it. The CDC should really be the main feature of this pattern. Try this pattern out this fall, and hey, the more fishy cats, the warmer you get. You can thank us later. So we'll tie this one real quick. Wait, now is that this one? This one? No, that, no that, that's a different. That, one. That's one we've already. That, yeah, that's that, a different. That's one. one we've already opened. This is okay. this will be a first time. So we've got our hooks here. This is size fourteen jig hook. But just for reference. This is kind of what you get when you get a Smitty's fly box. This is, I mean, this this is this is a different fly. That's a different fly, but this is it. Like but this, that's that's you get the hooks, you get the materials, you get the feathers, you get the hair. So it looks like a. You get the newsletter. This is twenty five hooks and uh, twenty three millimeter tungsten beads, metallic pink. Skated or dead drifted, the X caddis is money. Absolutely. Well, you know what? If I can't open it, it's not being good. 
Oh, there we go. Finally got it. So we get a beat out. And we'll hook this up. I'll probably just stick with the thread I've got in my bobbin just to keep it easy. So I, you want to hold up those beads so we can see what you're doing? <clears throat> so this is slotted tungsten beads, metallic pink. And uh, the, the hooks that came with it are these size 14 jig hooks. So three millimeter, 3.5 millimeter beads, jig hook. Got it. And we'll, after anchor thread to the hook, so we'll do that now. Now, I don't usually like to build a big thread dam like a lot of people do on jig hooks. I just try to make sure I get it seated correctly. Cut that off. I talked last week about the nano silk. It's kind of like cheating because you can just tie everything with white or black, and this is no exception. Uh, after I can thread your hook, tie a small tip section of CDC at the back of your back of the hook to extend just should only extend just past the bend. So we've got these nice little done CDC feathers here. When, the, when you replace this fly, does it become an X caddis? Uh -huh. <laughs> Jim. I, I made a joke back. Oh, you did? Good. Yeah, would you like to know what it is? Yes, I would love to. I said yes, but if you still use it sometimes, it's called an on-again, off-again caddis. Oh, honey. You're too funny. All right, so I just grabbed one of the feathers off of here. <clears throat> we'll tie it in a little bit long. Make sure it's at the back. We'll pull it to length. So just to the hook bend, so about like that. Bring this up. Just like this, not like so, but like this. Let's make sure our hook is going the right way. There we go. And I'll say I'll be moving my bead around quite a bit. Okay, next step is take a sparse on dubbing and roll on your thread. You'll wrap the, so no rib or anything, wrap the dubbing forward, create a nice tape of the body. So I'm guessing that we want. So we've got rainbow south god dubbing, and I've got peacock and oh, we've got two, oh olive south. Let's do the olive <clears throat> just for fun. Olive south, and this is like a this is a full pack of the olive south god. So remember what it said: don't overdo it, don't overdub. I agree with that. I concur. Katie, do you concur? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. This is like a the Smitty's fly box debut. I told you I was gonna open it without without looking. So same thing <clears throat> they usually do, but then what you dubbing there is I uh, have the bare thread, get it to where the dubbing's gonna start pretty much right at that hook bend. Here we go. He said not to overdub it, so we're keeping it nice and tight. I put way too much dubbing on it, but not take it off. My dubbing noodle's nice and thin. How far up do we go? Wrap the dubbing, take on a CDC feather, tie it in by tip. So I think that's about all we need there. There we go. Just tied a few from the Elkhair Caddis box to take some pics of Project Hill. Work. Cool. Awesome. Take a see if you had a tie in my tip right behind the bend. So I can probably use, I don't know if I can get by with the same one. I would probably put this in a loop just because I like the loops. But just to keep it by the directions on this one. And we'll take the tip of the one I just used. So I've got that right right there. Let's put some wax on my thread. 
I wouldn't really worry about that if it was not nano silk, but some wax on the thread. Capture it. Pull it back. Like this. And find some hack pliers. I'm telling you what, like when I first started tying the, and I realize I'm not tying Elkhart Caddis now, but because of Chris just said that, when I first started tying Elkhart Caddis, is, they're not like, it's, it's not like a super basic fly. Not to, especially on tie it right. I mean, it's there's a little stuff. How many wraps? Tied in by turn the CC feather on the hook shank three times or so. Stroke the fibers back so they're not facing forward. So we'll strike it back. That's two. And I think three will be overdressed. So I'm going to call it quits right there. A couple wraps there. Do a couple in the front. Cut that off. <clears throat> so we've got our. Let's pull these to length. Get those off a little bit. Work that off there. Looking good so far. Hey, no problem. Just takes practice. Yeah. Oops. Well, how many times have you tied an elk hair cast with deer hair? Because I do it quite a bit. At a slight. Dubbing collar that's smaller than bead. Okay. I do kind of wish it said what color dubbing you use, but I guess you can kind of figure it out. But if you're a new, a brand new tire, it'd be nice to know what you're supposed to use the, this peacock. I thought it was a great tire in the video. Yes, he was. Absolutely, Steve. I just have a little bit here. And what's cool. Misha Demuth, was that you? I cannot believe it. Maybe a little bit like that. So now I've got a little, <clears throat> little darker collar there. Just gonna hold that B place the way, the correct way. And um, we finish. And here I like to use my fingernails to pluck any long seeds if I got done. And um, Ready to go. So I'm gonna put use my brush on the on the thread. So I got my Sally Hansons there. Five turn whip finish right like that. Could probably put the uh maybe the the this peacock dubbing I mean, could have been a little bit thicker, maybe put a little more in there, but that'll, I mean, that'll fish. And that's, there's enough stuff in here to tie. If there's 25, 20 beads, so you could tie 20 of these. No, no problem at all. There's probably enough um, dubbing here to tie 50 of them. Um, and I'll use deer anymore. And that's good. That's, I mean, I, I think, Deer works just fine. No issues with that. Um, but that was pretty cool. So that was uh, that was the first ever time that I've tied A, that fly, and B, the fly from Smitty's fly box. So that is super cool. Next, next month, we'll tie one of his flies again, but we'll make a little bit bigger deal, deal about it. Maybe do a little more um, research on what we're supposed to be doing. Um, but for... You know, for that being an intermediate tying kit, that one's not too uh, not too difficult. Um, but just to put this one back up here, since that's what we just I think this one we just tied. I think this one we just now tied the uh, the X Caddis and cool. I tuned in, but the YouTube said drive. <laughs> Wayne, we try to be an equal opportunity. Uh, dry dropper however you want to call it um <laughs> but i'm glad that I'll, I'll switch it back out just for you although now i can't find the darn fly here it is katie how about this for a katie went to get the like it i'd like it thing a lot. Going. looks good um all right guys well thank you so much 
for joining us. Unfortunately, Katie and I were going to be, I've got a work meeting next week and it's not going to Colorado. Um, so we will not be um, here. We'll not be live next Wednesday night, but we're going to try to put up, put together a video or two for you so we can post those up and um, go over some techniques. If there's a technique video you'd like to see, shoot us a message on Instagram or um, YouTube. And um, as always, continue to comment. Uh, if, if you have made it this far, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel. Whoever forgot to tell me to go live on Instagram, dude, got to tell me to go live on Instagram. I always forget. Um, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and uh, we will have, once we hit 600 subscribers, we'll take everyone who commented on the video and the last video and the next video. Uh, anyone who has tied their variation of the elk or caddis or uh, the X caddis, um, put hack on, do, do whatever you want. Put CDC under wings, do all this, the fun stuff you want to do to it. But just use hashtag what finished Wednesday so Katie can share it next word in two weeks. Um, and, uh, and that'll put you in to win one of the, the prizes that we're giving away when we hit 600. Big thanks to Gary Barnes. Thanks to Smitty's Flybox. Thanks to Angler's Coffee. Um, I'm sure, and thanks to Umqua. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. Steve, thank you so much for the session. Time for clean fly. Good. The proportions are key. Thank you. Patrick, we really appreciate you. And Nikki, thanks so much. Mike, thanks for hopping on. And I will turn it over to Katie. Let her take us out. It's been real. It's been fun. And it has definitely been real fun, guys. We'll see you next week. Everybody enjoy their weekend. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. Bye.